Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to solve for a centroid and a second moment inertia of a beam. The reason I chose this topic is because it's fairly important and you would face this more often as you progress through second, third, fourth year manufacturing, mechanical, or even automotive engineering. Courses like statics, solid mechanics, machine design, and advanced solid mechanics, this, these courses are just build up knowledge courses. It's just that the complexity adds up as you progress through them. And you would, you would need to know the basics to be able to uh, be successful in these courses. This subject you have right here is really necessary for solving a variety of problems as many problems would actually require you to solve for a centroid and a second, second moment of inertia in, in order for you to be able to solve for the actual requested unknown in the problem. So why don't you just head and start solving this problem. So let's anal analyze this. Say we have a beam, which is an I-beam that we have right here. This is a fairly common case and mostly used in industry. So that's why I picked this I-beam thing. It could be any shape. It could be circular, it could be a T-beam, it could be a rectangular beam. It's just, they're all the same as if you know how to solve for them. It's just knowing how to go with the steps correctly. So I'm gonna just write here a few steps. So let's say we first gonna find this centroid. So first, First thing, first thing you need, you would need to do is define axis. So we have this problem right here, this beam. We can define the x-axis to be in the middle, to be here, or even into the top, in the top here. For our case, let's say we pick it to be at the bottom here. That's the x-axis. And the y-axis would be just somewhere in there. That's the coordinate. That's y. And that's x. The second thing we need to do is divide the shape. So this shape given into symbol shapes. So the best way to divide this is we notice that it can be divided into a set of rectangles such that we have a dashed line here and a dashed line here. That would divide it into three rectangles. Okay. The equation to find the centroid is this. It's equal to the summation of y bar times area divided by the summation of area. And since we divided these, this beam into three different rectangles, let's call this top rectangle A1, that's area 1, and the area of this second rectangle A2, and the area of this third rectangle, A3. In actual problem, you will be given dimensions. You would know, you would be able to find the actual area, that is height times base. And you'll find this area, same for this and for that one too. Let me deal with the bottom term first. So the summation of area, it's basically A1 plus A2 plus A3. So you find this area, this area, this area, sum them up, and there you have this bottom term here. The top term is a bit more tricky to deal with. Let me just write this term here. Again, I'm just going to write it here. It's going to be y bar times a. And what that is, is just some variable multiplied by a1 plus some another variable multiplied by a2 it's a2 plus some other variable multiplied by a3. And the reason we have three terms here, that's one, two, and three, it's because we have three shapes, right? We divide it into three shapes. Say we have 
and another example we have just a t-beam then we we'll just have this rectangle and that rectangle we would only have a1 a2 and two terms here but for for but for this example it's going to be three terms so how to find these terms here y bar is defined to be the distance from the local centroid of each shape to the x-axis let me do it here so the centroid of this shape here lies in the middle right in the middle of this shape the centroid of this rectangle lies just in the middle of the rectangle and the same applies for the first rectangle here just right in the middle and thus we could find the y bar 3 since this is this is a 3 so y bar for this one would be y bar 3 so it's going to be we said the y bar is the distance from the centroid of the shape to this x axis so if you extend a dashed line here the distance this distance is y bar 3 for this shape it's going to be this one here that's y bar 2 since this is shape 2 and the, for the final shape it's this here so that's y bar 1 since this is area 1 again in actual problems you'll be given dimension so y3 you could find from here you would know the height of this rectangle and you would just divide it by 2 to get y3 for y2 you would just take half of this height which is from here to here plus this height here and that's what that will give you y2 for y1 you would have this height plus this height plus half of this height to get this point so it's because the center of this one is from the center of the shape all the way to the x-axis that's how to find so that would be y bar 1, y bar 2, y bar 3. Done with the top and bottom. And that's how we find the centroid of the shape. Now, let's, let me just draw this shape again one more time. Here's my pencil. So I'm just going to redraw this shape to find which is going to be a rough drawing it's not exact but you get the idea okay the second moment of inertia is defined to be i which is equal to i of the shape plus a d squared but this would be enough if we have one shape that we can calculate the second moment of inertia in one step in this case we have divided our shape into three parts then i would be equal to the summation of i plus a d squared of each shape so we're going to find i plus a d squared for this one for that one for that one sum them all up and there we have this is actually i total so let's now see how we find so this is i i is basically i1 i2 i3 that's what we will like for i a we know that a is a1 a2 and a3 but how we found so for a it's going to be a1 a2 and a3 
but D we don't know right now. So let's look at this example. We said it's a symmetric shape. That is, the neutral axis passes through the center of it. So, so for symmetric shapes, the centroid for the entire shape, if it's symmetric, would lie just in the middle of that shape, which is here. If it's symmetric, I'm saying symmetric again. The centroid of in the middle here and the centroid in the middle here are just exactly the same, but do not confuse them. This one here I chose to be for this one. This is called local centroid for this shape. This is the local centroid for this shape, and this is the local centroid for that shape. But the global centroid lies just in the middle of the shape. So there is global centroid which is for the entire shape, and there is a local centroid which is for each division we have made here. Let me write a note here. Neutral axis, that's neutral axis, passes through the centroid of the beam. Centroid. That's why it's always important to find the centroid, then we find the moment of inertia. These two, these two terms are related. It's just steps. So we know, we know that the neutral axis passes through the centroid. Say this shape wasn't symmetrical. The, the neutral axis would, would be not in the middle because the centroid would be somewhere else if it's not symmetric. But for symmetric cases, the centroid in the middle, and we know that from this note here that the neutral axis, neutral axis passes through the middle. I'm gonna call this neutral axis. Neutral axis. Now let me define the local centroid for each shape again. For this one, we're not gonna, it's actually there already because you just can't double dot this because the centroid of the global, of the entire thing, the global one is just lying where the local centroid of this shape is. So how to find D1, D2, and D3? This is shape three. D is defined to be the distance from the neutral axis to the local centroid of the shape that we are considering. Then, for this shape here, it's going to be D3, and D3 is just from the neutral axis to here. That's D3. D2 would be from, uh, sorry, rather D1, this is shape 1, as we defined up here, 1, would be from the centroid of, of 1, the middle, so this is just should be in the middle, it's not a perfect drawing, and that would be D2, or D1. This is D3, not D cubed. So that's D3, that's D1. I hope you can see that D2, which is the shape, which is uh, the D for this shape, is actually zero because the centroid of this shape lies exactly where the neutral axis is. So there is no distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of this shape. Then D2 is zero for that reason. Do not confuse this again. Please make sure that you know that the Y bars are the distance, is a Y bar is the distance from the centroid to the X axis. The centroid to the X axis and the same here. However, 
D1 is the distance from the centroid to the neutral axis, not the x-axis, but the neutral axis. Since we know I1, I2, I3, D1, D2, D3, A1, A2, A3, we can just plug in the formula and find. But let me find I for rectangular shapes is equal to 1 12th BH cubed. And I'm assuming whoever is watching this video right now is familiar with the parallel axis theorem. So since we are considering considering this axis here, so the base of this one, B, would be this length. B for this one would be this length, and B for this one would be this length. The height would be this, this, and this. And we're going to have to do I1 would be this one here for this one. I2 would be the exact same formula for this one, and I3 would be the exact same formula for this one. It's just going to be different base and height, and we can notice that I1 would be equal to I3, because they both have the same height and base, symmetric shape. So, we just find them and let's say I total is equal to I1 plus A1 D squared, one, D1 squared plus I2 plus A2 d2 squared plus i3 plus a3 d3 squared. And we know that this term right here would be 0. Uh, no, sorry, not that term. This term right here would be 0 because d is 0. So actually this term right here, I would still exist for that one. It's just this term would be 0 because d is 0. So that will, that will simplify it a little bit. So why I is important? I, which is the second moment of inertia, is just a measure of how a beam can resist deflection. It's just a measure of stiffness, in another word. Say we have this beam. And this beam, if we, if we have an observer that's standing right here, Looking at the beam from this way, he would see the cross section that we have. So this beam right here, after some time, if it was loaded with some force, it will eventually deflect. Right? So if I is smaller, it means that the Property of the properties of the beam have high stiffness. If I is higher, we will have more deflection. So higher I, lower I would lead to lower deflection. So the beam would deflect this way. If we have I to be higher, very high value, then it means that the beam would eventually deflect even further. I hope this video clarifies how to find the centroid and the second moment of inertia, and thank you for listening.